Hello everyone and thank you for watching my channel. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Tailspin Tommy is on the air. again, ladies and gentlemen, come to tell you another thrilling story. That lovable, exciting aviation hero, Tailspin Tommy, with his flying pal Skeeter and Betty Lou. Stepping out of newspapers from coast to coast, stepping down from the motion picture screen, Tailspin visits you now each week over the radio. So join us for another exciting half hour for that ace hero of the skies, Tailspin Tommy. Good afternoon, folks. Well, it's nice to be here again with Skeets and Betty Lou to tell you about another of our adventures. Last week, you'll remember, Betty Lou brought Skeets and me some big news. A motion picture company was coming to Three Point to film an aviation picture, and Betty was pretty excited about it. We were all thrilled for that matter. And later on, when I learned that my friend Bruce Wilson was with the company, <laughs> I was the most excited of all. Bruce is a fine fellow and one of the country's best stunt flyers, and I certainly look forward to seeing him again. When the company arrived, we learned that Bruce was in charge of all the flyers who would take part in the picture. And the first thing he did was to hire Skeets and me to do a bit of dogfighting in one of the sequences. Our opponent was to be Grover Ellis, a pilot who was doubling for the leading man. And the script called for a really hot air battle. So the next afternoon... All right, Skeeter, let him have it. Are oh, the camera plane getting all this, Tommy? Every bit of it. We're going into a roll and then nose up. Hang on. Now, do I keep on shooting? Wait till I level off. Now then, go ahead. That's it. Now another one. Keep it up. That's what the script says. Bump it to him. Boy, if these was real bullets, old Grove Ellis would be dead. Hey, Skeet, he's having engine trouble. Yeah? He's losing altitude fast. Well, shall I keep on shooting anyway? No, no, wait. They're waving the flags on the field. That means the scene's been cut. very much pleased. Thanks, Bruce. Say, Bruce, when will this picture be showed here in town, huh? Well, that's pretty hard to say, Skeet. Well, I'm kind of anxious to see how I look on the screen. Oh, you boys won't be seen on the screen. Huh? They're just making long shots of that scene, no close-ups, and all you'll see is a couple of fighting ships. Oh, rats. <laughs> Cheer up, Skeet. Maybe you'll get a break yet. Now, uh, tomorrow morning, we're shooting another air battle, and there will be close-ups. Good. But uh, you boys won't take part in that. Oh, sure. I'll be doing the fighting. You see, uh, I'm doubling for the heavy, the uh, Red Hawk. You mean you're going to fight Grove Ellis? Sure. Uh, he's doubling for the lead. Well, I, I just don't savvy all this stuff. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of double talk, doesn't it, Skeeter? <laughs> you said it, Tommy. It sure does. All right, you're going to get to her. Well, yes. well, the ship was all right when you took her up. Oh, you're crazy. Uh-oh. Oh. Now it starts. Hey, Tompkins, who's the boss of this outfit? Why, Paul Smith. Well, I'm going to report this grease monkey. He sent me up with a cracked cylinder and a broken oil line. No, no, he's wrong about that. Look, well, I'll show you. He had some trouble up in the air. Now, we've seen it. That's right, Huey. Well, maybe he did, but it wasn't my fault. I'll explain. Oh, was... save your breath. Where'll I find this Paul Smith? In the office. That building over there. Yeah, fine. I'll settle this guy's face. Now, wait a minute, will you? You try to get that mechanic fired. I know him. Well, I don't blame him one bit, Bruce. That, that Huey Benson's as dumb as they come. Well, perhaps he is. But Ellis needn't get so nasty about it. He's a sore head. He's always fighting with somebody. Oh, that's so. Yes, he's had a run-in with nearly everybody in the company. Well, if he's that bad, why not they want to get rid of him? Well, he's under contract, for one thing. And they'd have a tough time finding another flyer that looks as much like Sherwood. Hey, oh. hey here comes Betty Lou with some dame. Careful, boy. That dame happens to be my fiancée. Oh, I... Well, I... Excuse me. <laughs> that's okay, Skeet. 
Well, girls, what's the good word? Ah, oh, the good word's really good, Bruce. I got Betty Lou that job. Well, fair enough. You hear that, Tommy? What? You and Skates aren't the only ones that crash the movies. Hey, what is all this? I'm an actress, I'll have you know. What? Patsy had a talk with the producer, and lo and behold... Uh, uh, oh, pardon me. <laughs> Patricia uh, Blake, this is uh, Mr. Tommy Tompkins. How, How do you do, Miss Blake? And this bashful gentleman here is our own Keith Milligan. Oh. How are you? <laughs> Betty Lou, I, I, I wish you wouldn't keep on calling me bashful. Why, oh, Keith, you're blushing right now. Oh, no, I ain't. That's just sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Barnes, I'm patiently waiting to hear your success story. Oh, the movie job. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Tompkins, I'm going to be a brilliant, glamorous, gorgeous, colossal... Yes. Extra girl. Oh. <laughs> now, don't you sneer at that, Tommy. She'll be an important extra. She's one of the three village maidens who rush up and embrace the hero after he conquers the slimy villain. <laughs> I wish I was the hero. Hey, Betty Lou, now, will your face appear on the screen, huh? Well, I hope so, Keith. Well, dad, bunny, here I blister my hand shooting up a machine gun and the screen ain't even gonna show my big toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes Ellis again. Well, that guy won't pull another stunt like that. Not around this airport, anyway. Did the chief fire him? I uh, certainly fired him. What are you talking about? Oh, never mind, Sugar. Don't bother your pretty little head about it. Now, wait a minute. I don't like that talk. What talk? That sugar stuff. You're talking to my girl now. Your girl? You heard me. Oh, <laughs> so she's stringing you along, too, is she? Why, you... Hey, 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 now, wait a minute. Hey, 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 hey,
Nothing wrong with Ellis' ship, either. Looks like we got here in time to keep that guy from doing any damage at all. Sure we did. Say, Tommy, look. Hmm? It's daylight. Hmm, sure enough, it is. Come on, let's go and get some sleep, huh? No, Skeeter. I think we'd better go outside and take a look around that window. Now, you ain't expecting to find any footprints, are you? That window opens onto a cement driveway, Tommy. No, but let's take a look out there. See, you never can tell. Maybe he tore a, tore a button off his coat or... Or drop something. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Here we are. Boy, oh, boy, look at that window. He sure did bust it out. Hey, Skeeter, see her on the cement. Huh? Blood. Well, sure not. And the guy cut himself. Yes, sir. And look over here. Why, here's more blood spots. Mm-hmm, plenty of them. Well, Skeeter, we know one thing. Whoever was in this hangar last night is nursing some fresh wounds. <laughs> On the way to the tower, huh? Yeah, now, we're, we're going to watch the dog fight between Bruce and Grover Ellis. Oh, that's right. Why don't you come up with us? Oh, I can't do it, Tommy. I've got a rehearsal pretty soon. Oh. Where's Patsy? Still sleeping, the lazy bone. I'd better go get her up. She's in the same rehearsal. Well, we'll be seeing you later then, huh? Let's have lunch together, huh? You bet, Tommy. Okay. Come on, Skeeter. Uh, you think we can see it all right from up there, Tommy? Sure. I'm going to fight right over the field. Did you bring that other pair of glasses? <laughs> you bet. Oh, then we're all set. Yeah, here we are. Ah, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, it sure is. Well, I, I see the camera planes, Tommy, but I... Where's Bruce and Ellis, huh? Over there, to the north. Oh, yeah, now I see it. Boy, they show a long ways off. Oh, well, they have to be. They'll start fighting over there and work this way, and they'll have to come fast. Hey. Hmm? Hey, I think they're starting in now. Yeah, yeah, here, here they come. Boy, oh, boy, this is going to be good. Hey, Bruce is sure prodding Ellis. Ain't it, though? Right on his tail every second. Look at that, would you? Boy, oh boy, is Bruce pulling it to it. This case, Ellis is having trouble. Yeah? He's losing control of his ship. I wonder what's the matter. Hey, look at Ellis. He's all slumped over in the cockpit. Why, it's high. Hey, Chris, guys, look at that tail assembly. It's falling apart. Well, what the dick is this? Bruce is shooting real bullets. Real bullets? That was him in the hangar last night switching the cartridge oh, clamps. Oh, no, it wasn't. Well, we're a couple of chumps, Tommy. We ought to have sense enough to look at their machine guns. Oh, well, here's Betty Lou. Oh, Tommy, do you know what caused that crack up? We know all about it, honey. We've we seen the whole thing through the glasses, huh? Do you know where Bruce is? Over in the office. They sent for the police. Oh, now the poor guy will be charged with murder. Why shouldn't he be? Listen, Betty Lou, Bruce wasn't responsible for Alice's death. It was someone else. And I'm going to find out who it was. Tompkins. He sells right here. Thanks, officer. Pleasure to see you, Wilson. Oh, hello, Tommy. Hello, Bruce. All right, go on in. You can have ten minutes. Fine, thanks. Tommy, do you think I deliberately killed Ellis? I do not. That's why I'm here. Somebody made me the goat, Tommy. I know. Now, listen, I'll have to talk fast. Last night, there was a guy prowling around in Hangar 14. Keith and I almost caught him. You mean? Yeah, he crashed out of the back window. Cut himself in the glass. We found bloodstains. Well, who was he? We don't know that, but... He put loaded cartridges in my machine gun. Sure he did. Now, here's the idea. We can find a guy with cuts on him. 
chances are we've got the party that did it. Well, does the district attorney know about this? Abbott? No, I haven't told him yet. Well, tell him, Tommy. Tell him right away. Sure I will, but wait. You said Ellis had a lot of enemies. Who are they? Oh, boy. Now you're asking me something. Well, name a few people who really had it in for him. Well, Monty Sherwood, the leading man, for one. Uh Uh-huh. He and Monty had a fight just the day before yesterday over a girl. Oh, I see. And, uh, and Frank MacArthur, the director, had a run-in with him about money. Mm. Claims Ellis beat him out of $300. Anybody else? Oh, look, Tommy, it's just like I told you. Ellis has had trouble with nearly everybody in the company. If you want to find somebody with cuts, well, you ought to have the DA look over the whole bunch. Mm, not a bad idea. I'll go right over to his office. Good. And look, fella, keep your chin up. I'll do everything I can to get you out of this jail. Tompkins, that's an interesting story, but I, I think you're wrong in your theory. Mr. Abbott, I'm not wrong. I tell you, there was somebody in that hangar. I said in your theory. The man you saw at the hangar was probably Ellis. Come there to damage Wilson's ship. Oh, no, no. Well, the case against Wilson is complete. Motive, opportunity, everything. He had a fight with Ellis just the evening before, and he threatened him. Said he'd end up in the morgue. I know, but, but look, Mr. Abbott, can't you at least follow through on my suggestion? Well, it's a big job examining all those people. Well, what if it is? It might save an innocent man from the chair. Well, I think it's foolishness, but I'll do it. Ah, oh, thanks, Mr. Abbott. I'll bring a doctor and a nurse and come out to Three Point in the morning. Well, Tommy, you certainly did start something. What do you mean, honey? Why all this inspecting of hands and foreheads and scalps? It's still going on over in the administration building. The skater over there? He was the last one in line when I saw him. Well, uh, honey, I know it's annoying, but, well, it just has to be done. I had to go through it with everyone else. Oh, there's Skeeter now. Hey, what do you know, fella? Well, what I know, you ain't gonna want to hear, Tommy. Oh, what's that? Well, they, they never found a scratch on nobody. No kidding. Not a scratch. And the D.A. said to give you his compliments and tell you not to bother him with any more of your wild ideas. Oh, he did, eh? Well, I'm going over and bother him right now. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to ask him to deputize me so I can make an arrest. An arrest? Yeah. Grover Ellis had one enemy that wasn't with that bunch. Huey Benson, the mechanic. Hey, that's right. But Huey Benson's gone, Tommy. Yeah, I think I know where to find him, though. Keep you warm up the silver streak while I go talk to Abbott. Sure, we'll find this guy in Granville, Tommy? No, I'm not sure, but he told me his mother lives there, and he often stays at her place. Well, you know where his mother lives? No, I don't. We shouldn't have any trouble finding her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a little burg like Granville. Say, we'll ask the guy at the post office, huh? Or a corner drugstore. I doubt if the post office will give out anyone's address, being that's the postal, you know. Hey, how about sitting down there? Well, what about it? Well, there ain't no field there, Tommy. Well, I know it. <laughs> For Pete's sake, Pete, do we always have to have a field? We're flying the silver streak, remember? Well, uh, I guess we could sit down in some pasture or something. I already know the place. It's a bean field near the edge of town. Well, then everything's okay. Except we'll have to pay for the beans we roam. <laughs> <laughs> well, we worry about that later. You know, Skeet, something tells me we're on the right track. <laughs> Could be. There's a car out in front. Say, hey, that looks like you was jalopy. Yes. Well, what is it? Are you Mrs. Benson? Yes. Could we come in and talk to you a minute? It's about your son, Huey. Uh, we heard he was out of work. You got a job for Huey? Well, we'd like to talk it over. Maybe come in. here, Mrs. Benson? No, he ain't. Mm. You know where he is? No, I don't. I ain't seen him since yesterday morning. 
But if you got a job for him, I can... Hey, Tommy, find somebody him. stopping that car. Come on, Skeeter. What? It's you, eh? Hey, come back here. Hey, hey there he goes, Tommy. Never mind, Skeeter. No kidding. Well, how can we? We ain't got no car. Oh, no, but we got the silver streak. Come on. No, I don't, Tommy. Would you recognize the car? Well, I will if I see it. Well, I'll keep circling around sooner or later. NC 462X. Hey, hey, there's our call. Calling NC 462X. Come on in, Tommy. This is Tommy. Go ahead, three points. You fellas can come back from that wild goose chase. The guilty party's confessed. Come in. Cut my switch. Hello, Ted. What guilty party are you talking about? Who confessed? Come in. Why, the party that put the slugs in Bruce Wilson's machine gun. We got a phone call from the DA. He didn't say who the party was, but he's got a confession all right. Come in. That's all, Ted. Well, can you beat that? We're keeping right after Huey. After Huey? But he ain't guilty, Tommy. What do you mean he isn't guilty? He ran out on it, didn't he? Yeah, but don't you suppose the DA knows what he's talking about? Just the same. We're keeping after Huey. <laughs> There he is, Tommy. I see him. Yeah, give me the glasses. There he is, right below us. Now, you see him? He's the only car on the highway. Must be heading for Edgeport. Sure he is. Now, he'll never get there. We'll, we'll stop him. Stop him? Yeah, it's easy. We'll fly ahead of him and set down on the highway. Say, now, that's not a bad... I... The highway? Why, that's suicide. Oh, not down there. It's plenty wide for the ship. We'll block the road and he can't get by us. He'll have to stop. And then we'll grab him, Skeeter. <laughs> Easy, Tommy. Easy. Set it down straight now. We're, we're all right. Oh, there we are. Boy, that was swell work, pal. He won't see the ship till he comes around that curve there. Eh? Well, this is good. Let's get out. No danger of anyone running into the ship from out that way. You can see straight ahead there for miles. See, do you think we'd better see get... See bushes up there? Yeah. Well, that's where we'll wait for him. Hurry up, Skeeter. N now, look, Tommy. Suppose Here we get... are. Now, get in here. Hey! Hey, here he comes now! Get ready, Skeeter. All right, Huey, get out of that car. There he goes out the other side. After him, Skeeter! Get back there, old shoot! Oh, yeah! Oh! Now, come on. Give me that gun. Now, where's your gun? Come Never on. mind, Skeeter. He hasn't got a gun. He was just bluffing. Hey, what's the idea you guys chasing me? The same idea that made you run from us, Huey. You're wanted at three point for questioning about a murder. Come on, get in the ship. Uh, sit down, Miss Barnes. Tompkins. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. I got the message you were coming down, so I had Miss Blake brought over from jail. Well, Miss Blake, suppose you straightened Tompkins out on just what happened. Yes. Well, Tommy... I'm the one who, who put the loaded cartridges in that gun. Yes? Yes, I, um... Well, you don't know the whole story about Ellis, but he'd been slandering me, Tommy, and... Well, I was afraid he'd caused a breakup between Bruce and me. So and... you decided to get rid of him in such a way that the man you love would be suspected? Oh, no, huh? I... Uh, I, well, I... I guess I just didn't stop to think of the consequences to Bruce. Patsy, that story's pretty thin. Now, if you don't believe me, I can very easily prove it. Look at my hand. Yes, you see those cuts, Tompkins? Betty Lou, hmm? remember when you woke Patsy up for rehearsal that morning? Oh, yes. Were these cuts on her hand then? I certainly didn't see them. Well, uh, of course you didn't, honey. I I kept my hands under the cover. What about this lineup, this inspection? Well, I uh, I managed to dodge that. I I just wasn't there. Doesn't speak very well for your efficiency, Mr. Abbott. Well, uh, well a lot of people, Tompkins. I thought I got everybody. Maybe I didn't. Well, Patsy, you're not fooling me. The person who broke that window was badly cut. There was a lot of blood. And these little scratches looked like they were made with a razor blade. Oh, no, they weren't. Besides, I distinctly saw a man climbing out of that window. I, I wore slacks, Tommy. All right, all right. Patsy, you're making this confession to save Bruce, but it isn't necessary. 
We've got another confession. A real one. What other confession? Huey Benson. We caught him, Mr. Abbott, and you ought to see his head. It's literally covered with bandages. You say he confessed? Of course. Skeets and I uh, uh, made him come clean. Now, look, Patsy, Bruce is all in the clear, so I want you to confess to the truth this time. Oh, oh Tommy. Come on, tell Mr. Abbott you were lying. I... Yes, Mr. Abbott. He's right. But, but I had to do something. Poor Bruce. Never oh. mind, darling. It's all right. Well, it looks like I've been barking up the wrong tree. Where is this Benson? In the outer office with Skeets. Well, bring him in. You bet I will. Okay, Skeeter, bring Huey in. All right, now, get in there, you go. Hey, are you the district attorney? Yes, I am. Well, you're just a man I want to see. I want protection. These guys have been hounding me all over the country, manhandling me, accusing me of a crime I didn't commit. Oh, wait a minute. I thought you said he confessed, Tompkins. Well, I... I had to say that to get Patsy to tell the truth, Mr. Abbott, but I don't think there's any doubt in your mind but what he is guilty, huh, Mr. Abbott? Well, I... <laughs> you folks clear out of here. I'm going to work on this fella. Oh, no, I'll get it, honey. Hello? Yes, this is Tompkins. He did? Oh, fine. That's wonderful, Mr. Abbott. Yeah, there you bet. Yes, indeed. Thanks a lot for calling. You don't need to tell us. Huey's confessed. After three hours of persuasion. Oh, boy, oh, that's well, that's well, now we can settle down and finish our picture. That is, if the company's still here, I haven't had a chance to check up. Oh, yes, everybody's here. They've been taking things on the ground, waiting to see how this murder case would turn out. And what are they going to do about a man to take Ellis's place? Well, they, they were just about through with the flying shots anyway. About through? Ain't I going to be in no more scenes? Hey, wait a minute. Look, if it hadn't been for you, Tommy and Skeets, I'd still be in jail. I'll say you would. So I'm going to arrange something special for you. Yeah? What is it, Bruce, huh? I know a spot where the director can use a close-up of a couple of flyers. Yeah? And I'm going to get the job for you two. You mean... You mean I'll be seen on a screen? <laughs> Big as life and twice as natural. <laughs> oh, oh, hot diggity dog! <laughs> Now, here again is the man of our story, Tailspin Tommy. Well, Bruce was true to his word, and a few days later, the director took a close-up of Skeets and me, stepping out of the Silver Streak and shaking hands with another pilot. <laughs> Skeets made a special trip to Fort Worth to see the picture before it was released in Three Point, and all he talked about for weeks afterwards was his appearance in the movie. As for Betty Lou, she did well in the picture, both artistically and financially. They used her in quite a number of scenes and paid her well for her work with the result that when the company departed for Hollywood, Betty was in possession of a tidy sum of extra money. Now, three guesses as to the first thing a woman thinks of when she gets hold of extra cash. Huh? <laughs> You're right the first time. New clothes. So nothing would have it but that Skeets and I must fly Betty Lou to Dallas for a raid on the big department stores. We started late one afternoon, planning to arrive in Dallas early in the evening. Along about dusk, when we were still some distance from the city... Well, pals, we're running out of gas. Out of gas? Why, well, I thought you filled her up before we started, Tommy. I thought you filled her up. Why, no, Tommy. Now, don't well, you remember? never mind. Maybe we can hold out till we get to Shellsburg. Oh, sure we can. There's Shellsburg right ahead. Oh, no, honey. It's 35, 40 miles from here. Well, there's some landing field ahead. I can see it. Well, there sure is, Tommy. And a big one, too. It looks like an airport. Oh, skate for yourself. You know there's no airport in this neck of the woods. Well, look and see for yourself. See that long row of hangers? Yeah, and there's a big building there. And a control tower. Hey, I wonder what field that is. I thought I knew them all. Well, let's sit down there, Tommy. Well, sure we will. How's the wind, Skeet? Well, I can't see the sock. Don't look like they got one. No wind sock at an airport? Well, maybe it's getting too dark for me to see it. Say, why don't you drag the field, huh, Tommy? I'll do that. Wish they turn on the floodlight. Jazz the motor, Tommy. Well, I guess they're all sound asleep. Well, that's funny. There's no lights at all down there. Not even in the building. Oh, I see. The place seems to be deserted. You gonna sit down anyway, Tommy? I certainly am, Skate. I'd rather sit down here than run completely out of gas before we find Shellsburg. Besides, I'm curious about this field. Well, when we landed at that deserted airport, we found ourselves confronted with a deep and puzzling mystery. 
And when we investigated that building, Betty saw, well, to say that we were plunged into a new and dangerous adventure is putting it mildly. I'll be with you again next Sunday afternoon to tell you the whole thrilling story. So until then, good afternoon, all. with us again next week at the same time when Tailspin will be heard in the story The Ghost Room, another in the adventures of Tailspin Tommy. <laughs> Tune in every week at the same time for that daring hero of the skies with his pals Skeeter and Betty Lou, straight from pictures and newspapers created by Hal Forrest, Tailspin Tommy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.